What is the twin cycle hypothesis? The twin cycle hypothesis was my attempt to put together all the observations on how the body actually worked, how the body dealt with food and metabolism, and what went wrong in type 2 diabetes. So over the years, we'd learned firstly that muscle was very resistant to insulin and using MRI techniques, advanced MRI techniques, we could measure the glycogen in muscle. And in fact, use this to show that people who had normal uh, insulin sensitivity in muscle stored a lot of their food as muscle glycogen within the first five hours after eating. One third, really quite a lot. Whereas people who had low sensitivity to insulin in muscle, so-called insulin resistance, those people stored almost none. And from other work, we knew that the only way that that glucose would be handled is not being stored properly. The only way it could be handled would be for the body to turn it into fat. Now, that sounds like magic, but that's exactly what the liver does. And so that excess glucose would be shunted into fat and people would be more likely to build up fat in the liver. Now, we'd shown fat in the liver causes the liver not to respond to insulin. Now, I put all this together and the twin cycle hypothesis runs like this. Basically, a little too much food over a long period of time will cause fat to start building up in the liver. And when the liver starts getting resistant to insulin, it will start putting out too much glucose because insulin usually dampens down the constant production of the liver of glucose. So there we have glucose rising a bit, but what happens next is that the pancreas kicks in and insulin levels rise a bit to just bring things under control. Now that's fine temporarily, but unfortunately, insulin speeds up the process of turning glucose into fat. And so we've got a vicious cycle that started running. That will run on and glucose levels will gradually peg up. But it's not just the glucose that the liver puts out. The liver also puts out fat for the rest of the body. The liver really supplies you with the energy you need to live every day. Overnight, it's the glucose coming out from the body that keeps your brain alive and the fat coming out from your liver that keeps the rest of the body alive. That's what they use to burn for energy, second by second. It's an astonishing process. But if there's too much fat in the liver, then that one liver cycle will have a knock-on effect because it will leave too much fat in the blood. The liver puts out too much fat. It will be delivered to all tissues. Now, any excess fat would usually be stored under the skin. And metabolically, that's safe. It doesn't cause any metabolic damage. However, in the situation of excess and with a relatively full subcutaneous under the skin compartment, then fat's going to build up elsewhere. And that's the problem. And it's when fat starts building up inside the pancreas that really the action starts. So we have a second vicious cycle in the pancreas. The fat stops the insulin producing cells from working properly. Lo and behold, that means glucose levels are higher after every meal. And lo and behold, that means more glucose is going to be turned into fat. And so we have these twin vicious cycles interacting. The importance of this twin cycle, Simon, was that it explained type 2 diabetes as a simple chain of events. Yes, interacting cycles, but a single cause. Now, that is simple. And what we see in populations is when they're overfed, diabetes erupts. If they're relatively starved, diabetes goes away. So all of a sudden, we had a handle on this, 
And it was a complete revelation and a move away from what all the experts were saying up to 2011, that type 2 diabetes was a complex heterogeneous disorder caused by multiple different factors. Well, that's nonsense. Basically, you inherit your genes, but if you put on a bit too much weight, heavier than you can bear, then these twin vicious cycles will start turning. And being a hypothesis, it could be tested and shown to be right or wrong. Quick one, folks. I get asked all the time about buying supplements and getting blood tests. The good news is I've created comprehensive and completely free guides for both. Simply head over to my website, theproof.com, to download them. That's theproof.com. Okay, let's get back to the episode. You said there that the twin cycle hypothesis provides an explanation for a single cause. What if someone is thinking, well, hang on, how can excessive calories explain this if not everyone who becomes overweight or obese ends up with type 2 diabetes? That's a very good question. The first point to make is that there's a wide range of thresholds at which people will develop type 2 diabetes. So in our most recent study, we've demonstrated that those slim people who get type 2 diabetes have got too much fat inside their organs. They simply don't show the fat. So there's this matter of how much fat and this personal threshold for fat but there's a further point, which is really important. About 70% of people of white European ethnicity will not, never get diabetes, no matter how much they eat, how fat they become. And in fact, at the moment, 73% of people with, uh, who have a body, mass in, in, sorry, a body mass index over 40 do not have type 2 diabetes and show no signs of getting it in the near future. So we can see that it's only a proportion of people who are susceptible. And that is the stop-go of getting type 2 diabetes. So there are really two stages. One is the eating too much. The other is the uh, genetic factor. But why do I say that it's just one? Well, it's because I'm talking to a group of individuals, they are one person each. And in my consultations with patients, I only have one person in front of me. And that person comes in with a ready-made collection of genes. They are themselves. Now, doctors have to practice the art of the possible. So I'm dealing with individuals. If a person presents to me with type 2 diabetes, they have insulin-producing cells that are susceptible to fat. And that is, the, that is the whole point. So this disease is simple to understand. Right, so it's, it's not necessarily fat or being overweight or obesity that is the single explanation, but it is fat getting inside these organs, the liver and the pancreas specifically, fat, I guess, where we could say it shouldn't be in individuals that are more susceptible to this. So certain individuals, as they're gaining weight, are more genetically predisposed to having fat stored within organs, whereas other individuals have a greater capacity, would that be the right terminology, to store more fat subcutaneously and not inside these organs? Yes, that's absolutely right. Okay, so let me throw back to you what I grasped from your explanation of the twin cycle hypothesis. So it all kind of begins with this positive calorie balance. So a very small calorie surplus over a long period of time, coupled with muscle insulin resistance. This results in an increase in blood glucose or that extra glucose, the body has to do something with it. Instead of forming glycogen in muscle tissue, you get an increase in de novo lipogenesis, which is the conversion of glucose to fat within the liver, 
with the increase in liver fat, you get insulin resistance in the liver. Insulin's job at the liver being to slow down or halt the uh, flux of glucose from the liver into circulation. So with that, you get an increase in blood glucose. The, the response from the pancreas there is to increase insulin. So insulin levels go up and insulin then increases or drives more fat production in the liver. Eventually, the body has to do something with that excess fat being produced in the liver, packages it up in um, lipoproteins, these VLDL, uh, very low density lipoproteins, which are an APOB containing lipoprotein and are therefore atherogenic, and they go out into circulation. If the subcutaneous fat storage has been exceeded, that excess fat that is now in circulation, it has to go somewhere. And eventually it can begin to build up in organs, particularly the pancreas, which then can begin to affect the beta cells in the pancreas that produce insulin such that there is reduced insulin in response to ingesting a carbohydrate containing meal. And with that, you get increase in plasma glucose and the, the liver begins to convert more glucose into fat and so forth. The cycle kind of self perpetuates. Did I grasp all of that correctly? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm.